afternoon, everyone, and welcome. The time is now 5.30. We will call this meeting to order. It was duly posted as required by state law, and we do have a quorum present. We will begin with the invocation. I'll ask Mayor Pro Tem Rini Bettis to lead us. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude and humility. We thank you for the privilege of serving the people of Harlingen and for the opportunity to gather as a city commission today. As we embark on this meeting, we want to express our deep appreciation for the dedication and hard work of the city staff and employees who diligently serve our community. They are the backbone of our city and we acknowledge the tireless efforts they put forth each day. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless them abundantly for their commitment to excellence and their unwavering dedication to serving others. We also want to thank you, Father, for the opportunity to serve our beloved city. It is an honor to have a role in shaping its future and making a positive impact in the lives of its residents. We are grateful for the trust and support bestowed up upon us by the people of Orange. <coughs> <coughs> As we gather today, we pray for continued prosperity and growth for our city. May it flourish in all aspects, economically, socially, and spiritually. Grant us the wisdom and discernment to make decisions that will foster a thriving <coughs> and inclusive community where all residents can thrive and find fulfillment. Lord, we ask for unity and cooperation among the members of this commission. Help us to approach our discussion and deliberations with respect, understanding, and a genuine desire to find common ground for the betterment of our city. We also lift up the residents of Harlingen to you, Father. We pray for their safety, well-being, and prosperity. May their voices be heard and their concerns addressed as we work together to create a city that nurtures and uplifts its residents. In closing, we offer our sincere gratitude for the opportunity to serve our community, even in the midst of this relentless heat wave. It, it brings a smile, if it br brings a smile to your divine face, we kindly rec uh, request a temporary reprieve from feeling like we're roasting on a hot summer grill. While we understand the value of embracing challenges, a touch of coolness would certainly be a delightful gift. Grant us the wisdom and determination to tackle the matters at hand, and if you can, add a refreshing breeze into the mix. It would be an extra blessing. With gratitude and a touch of lightheartedness, we pray our trust in your guidance. Amen. 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 <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ask uh, the city attorney to read the conflict of interest, please. Yes, Under state law, a conflict of interest exists in the <coughs> for certain members of that person's family as a qualifying financial interest in their agenda. Members of the conflict of interest cannot participate in the discussion or vote on the agenda. Are there any known conflicts of interest in this uh, Yes, item six. <coughs> item four. Okay. Um, uh, none for me, Mike? None. 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 <coughs> Wonderful. Okay. Moving on to our recognition award. Um, Amanda, do you have that? It's right here, Mayor. Okay. I can bring it. That would be wonderful. <coughs> This time, I'd ask for um, Aria Longoria and, and her father to approach the podium. <coughs> Perfect. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I do have a recognition award. The city of Harlingen proudly presents this award and congratulates Miss Aria Longoria, winner of the 2023 Junior Miss United World Cameron County Little Miss for her exceptional and outstanding accomplishments. And these are just a few of them. <clears throat> she raised funds and donated the proceeds to the Angels of Love, the American Heart Association, the Family Crisis Center, the Rio Grande Humane Society, 
and for her generous contributions to the community while participating in the HCISD theater production and all the while maintaining an A average in her studies. So on this day, the 21st of day, 21st of June, 2023, it is my honor and privilege to provide this recognition award to this lovely little girl, uh, Mrs. Aria Longoria. Will the commission please join me? How wonderful was that? Can we all give Miss Aria another round of applause? All right, moving right along to citizen communication. Do we have anyone signed up? Uh, yes, ma'am, we do. The first one is um, Mark Stevens, 245 Lewis Street. And the topic is Casa of Cameron and Willis County's request for CDBG funding. Okay, Mr. Stevens, if you would approach. Good afternoon. Uh, again, my name is Mark Stevens. I am the proud treasurer for Casa and Cameron and Cameron Willis County. Uh, our mission for CASA is to be an independent voice for children who have been removed from their homes because of abuse and neglect. Uh, these funds help support a portion of our salary for one of our volunteers and works in the Harange uh, area for, for the children of this area. Uh, we understand the budgets are tight and we humbly ask that you support funding for this program. Uh, we strive uh, on the quality of life and help our children. So I just kindly ask that you, uh, your attention to this matter, and I wish you all the very best, and have a very safe summer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. The next one is Alex Ambriz, 902 South Loop 49, number 502. Topic is CDBG Black Grant Funding. Ms. Ambriz? Okay. She's not here. Okay. The um, these have been <coughs> distributed to the to the commission, correct? Yes. Comments? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on. And then it's Israel Aguilar, address twenty eight one thirty six Cook Lane. Topic is item six A. I see him here. Hold on. I guess it's the same one. Yes. All right. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Commissioner's Court Mayor. I'm here to speak a little bit about uh, CASA again. I'm a proud volunteer of CASA. Uh, as you know, I'm very involved in the community. I'm the current president of one of the Rotary Clubs here in Harlingen, and I also volunteer on several organizations. But CASA is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, for the last two years, I have advocated in court for one specific child, an infant to be exact, uh, because of that very same thing that Mr. Stevens just talked about. These are children who are removed from their homes due to abuse and neglect. And when you think about some of the instances and, the, and how frequent these are occurring, um, and then you hear that this particular organization 
was recommended for zero, it, it is concerning because, again, like I said, for two years I've advocated in court for another person that can't speak on their behalf. <clears throat> I, I have to remind you, this is an infant. And so I have children of my own. Um, and this is a, a, a great blessing for me to be able to advocate my time and energy and resources uh, for the community, but especially, again, for the most vulnerable, which are our children. Um, and again, I, I ask for this uh, commissioner's court uh, to reconsider the decision of, um, based on the committee to not fund CASA. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your advocacy. The next one is Amadeo Flores, 4014 South Houston Drive, and CDBG funding. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, sorry. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's kind of broken record here, but I'm also here to help represent CASA. Uh, I'm new to the committee, but um, I do urge you guys, uh, first off, thank you, forgot to say, thank you for your time. But I do urge you all to reconsider sending some funding to this organization. Uh, like the man before me stated, uh, we do this out of the kindness of our heart to help reach out to those who cannot reach out for themselves. So in order to, I guess, deny us funding would not be affecting us, but be affecting the community. And uh, I really, really urge you to reconsider. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate your words, <coughs> Mr. Flores. The last one is Linda Ramos, 1022 <coughs> North B Street, Vestal Park. Good afternoon, and all the commissioners. Good to see you guys. Can you hear me correctly? I have how many minutes? I'm sorry. How sorry. many minutes do I have? Three minutes. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to give thanks to everybody that's here, commissioners and everybody's working. Um, for improving the, the District 2, the lighting, um, speed bumps, uh, we were doing improvements. I am here on, on behalf of Vista Park. I want to thank a couple of people. I want to take uh, Public Works for the hard, the hard work, for going out there and, and ensuring that we have lights. It, it's uh, beautiful going into our streets and seeing lights. Um, I also want to take thank uh, Chief Kessner and um, Officer De Luna here, and he knows so much about our children. And that's why I'm here, because I want to advocate, and I want to thank the board of the CB, um, the Community Development Board, for recommendations to our park, because it's due time. We got to save our children, and I'm asking every single one of you to please consider adding more. If we can save one children from drugs, alcoholism, and crime, we live in a high crime area. We've already installed the lights. We've installed other things. Let's keep improving. Again, we need to save our future, which are our children. And I'm asking every single one of y'all. We still need so much more improvements, lighting, basketball courts. We need more stuff, because after COVID, we have a lot of mental illness. And it breaks my heart to see the children that I've coached basketball and such go into drugs selling drugs in the corner because there's nothing for them to do. We have a beautiful park, guys. We need help in making the right changes. And I'm thanking you guys for helping improve this. Every single one of you guys have made a difference. Um, our community. And we need to be recognized as Harlingen that safe starts with District 2 and the, the heart of Harlingen and the, the one that has a high crime area. Let's make a difference together. Every single one of y'all can do it. And we need your help from the Neighborhood Watch because it starts with one and it, it, together we're stronger. And, and I'm asking for more improvements besides lighting and approvals. We still need more stuff to help our children. Um, like I'm the voice of the children and so are everybody else that is in the Neighborhood Watch. We have joined with the Hardinger Police Department to help <coughs> our children and our streets be safer because we want to be able to be outdoors and have fun, you know, and the children are our future. And it's who are, can do it. We can do it. We're the adults. They look to us, say, wow, look at what they made for us. When they don't have nobody, they have no hope. I see them in the streets. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Ms. Linda. That's it. Okay. Um, Mr. Flores.
Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to item number one, approval of minutes of the regular meeting of May 3rd, 2023. Are there any amendments or changes? If not, do we have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item two, consent agenda. Is there anyone wanting to take anything out of the consent? If not, do we have a motion to approve consent agenda A through D? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And moving on to new business. Item three, public hearing and possible action to adopt an ordinance on first reading for a rezoning request from the Plan Development District to residential multifamily district for a property located along the east side of New Hampshire Street, approximately 1,200 feet south of U.S. Expressway 83, bearing a legal description of Lot 2, USBP subdivision, and um, Javier. Mayor City Commission, good evening. So we have a, a proposal to rezone the property on New Hampshire. This is a property just south of the Border Patrol Station, and they're proposing to change it from PD district, plan development district, to multifamily residential. <coughs> This is the aerial photograph of the property, so you can see the Border Patrol station, and this is uh, the large tract of land just south of the Border Patrol. You have single-family residences uh, nearby, businesses along the expressway, and an apartment complex at Caddy Corner from this property. This is a sur the survey of the subject properties, uh, a, pro a proposed apartments uh, development. Photos of the property from uh, New Hampshire. In the land use plan, it calls for institutional, but that there is there are apartments uh, under construction, cutty corner. So we feel that the staff feels that the property, the area is in transition to multifamily residential. Zoning: so you have single family and general retail district, but you have the apartments uh, to the southeast. And these are the apartments on Ed Carey that is that I mentioned is cutty corner from this property, the Sunland Apartments. And here's a photograph, uh, a recent photograph on, on Ned Carey. So it's a beautiful apartment complex that should be completed in, in about a month or two. So staff recommends approval of the rezoning. No one, uh, this went before PNC. No one spoke in opposition. And Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval unanimously. <coughs> Are there any questions for Javier? No. At this time, we will open this up for a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak for or against the um, adoption of this item? Having no one to speak, we'll close the public hearing, and I will ask the city attorney to read the caption, please. An ordinance amending the code of ordinance of the city of Holland, rezoning from plan development district to residential multifamily M2 district for a property located on the east side of West New Hampshire Street approximately 1,200 feet south of Expressway 83, bearing a legal description of Lot 2, USBP subdivision, providing for publication and remaining other matters related to the court. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, item number four, public hearing and possible action to adopt an ordinance on first reading for a rezoning request from residential single family district to residential duplex district for a property located at 514 East Fillmore Avenue bearing a legal description of lot four, block one, two, three, Harlingen Original Town Site. Have yet? Yes, so this is a property on Fillmore uh, between 5th and 6th Street, kind of halfway in the, in the black. Uh, it's in the south side of the street, and the uh, property owners are interested in, in building a duplex uh, at the property. Uh, we consider a duplex being a low-density residential, so we recommend approval. Here's a photograph of the subject property. It's, it's all single-family all around. A survey of the subject property. There's an, an old house right now that will be demolished in, in the very near future. And the intent is to build a brand new duplex in the property. <coughs> Here's the photograph of the of the old house that is slated for demolition uh, very soon. In the land use plan, is uh, calls for low density res residential. We consider a duplex 
low density residential and therefore we recommend approval. This went before planning and zoning commission. No one showed up in opposition and PNC recommended approval <coughs> unanimously. Thank you, Javier. Is there any questions for Javier? No. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Is there anyone here that wishes um, to speak on behalf or uh, opposed to the adoption of this ordinance? Having no one here to speak for or against, we'll close the public hearing and I would ask the city attorney to read the uh, <coughs> caption, please. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances for the city of Bollington, rezoning from residential single family R1 district to residential duplex R2 <coughs> for a property located at 514 East Fillmore Avenue, bearing a legal description of Block 4, Block 123, on which an original town site providing for publication or banning other matters related to the vision. Great. And we'll just let the record reflect that Commissioner Lopez has abstained from this item. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item <coughs> five, public hearing and possible action to adopt an ordinance on first reading to amend the code of ordinances, uh, chapter 105, flood damage prevention. Mr. Uh, Cook, assistant city manager, will be presenting this uh, agenda. Wonderful. Pinch hitting as it is. Good evening, Mayor, Commission, Craig Cook, assistant public assistant city manager this first reading of the proposed changes to the court of code of ordinances section 105 flood damage prevention is a culmination of a year-long process by the city engineer the planning and zoning commission and dana snyder of the texas community watershed partners to improve flood mitigation in our community dana briefed you on this topic in jan on january 18th 2023 and she was, has superbly led the team to this point. She was unable to attend tonight, so you get me. Um, so, uh, but I will extend to her the city's gratitude for her efforts at no cost to the city, I might add. Yes. <coughs> we updated the ordinance to mitigate future flood impacts, but have worked to ensure that even while making sure that new development doesn't exacerbate the risk, we are meeting your priority of strong uh, economic development. As you can see from the uh, project timeline in your packets, we've held numerous meetings with the Planning and Zoning Commission, local engineers, and the community to draft these changes. changes. We received good recommendations from our local engineers and incorporated ne nearly all of their changes. Recently, the Flood Outreach Specialist with the Texas Water Development Board, Stephanie Resendez, reviewed the changes and provided her approval. PNZ Commission recommended approval of these changes unanimously at last week's meeting. The subsidy changes fall under these seven categories in the sections shown. Extraterritorial extra jurisdiction applicability, the use of the base level engineering, free board, no adverse impact, compensatory storage, uses permitted in the floodplain, and enforceability. In the interest of time, allow me to summarize at a high level uh, each category. <clears throat> First, this ordinance applies to special flood hazard areas within the city and the ETJ extending 3.5 miles out from the city limits, not the five mile limit, the 3.5 mile limit. For the use of base level engineering, available data from the Laguna Madre watershed base level engineering assessment dated October 2021 will be reviewed and reasonably used to ensure conformance with Section 105 along with FEMA map data. BLE, as it's called, is easily accessible to the public on the internet. The link is provided within the definition of base level engineering in Section 105 and will be provided on the city website upon approval of these changes. The use of BLE will be replaced within the ordinance by the new master drainage plan when completed by CSC in May of next year and then published on the city website in summer of 2024, subsequent to city commission approval, of course. Item three, free board. Free board is a critical method of reducing structural flood impacts and is the rise in elevation of the lowest floor of a structure above the base flood elevation established by FEMA maps or the base level engineering information, or above the top of the curb, whichever is higher. For residential construction in a special flood hazard area, 
section 105 now requires freeboard of 18 inches above the base flood elevation or 24 inches above, above the top of curb, whichever is higher. Non-residential structures require 18 inches of freeboard above the flood, uh, base flood elevation. No adverse impact means that you can't flood your neighbor. The developer's professional engineer will now certify that the proposed development will not create any adverse impacts to other properties to include no increase in flood stage, which is the water level causing sufficient uh, inundation of the area, no increase in flood velocity, the speed of the water, no, in, no increase in flow, no increased potential for erosion and sedimentation, and any other impact deemed important by the city engineer. Compensatory storage only applies to develops, developments of or greater than 50 lots or 5 acres and requires an equal amount of material to be removed <coughs> elsewhere within the development as the amount of fill material <coughs> added within the development or removal of double the amount of fill if removal is off-site but within one half mile of the development. <coughs> Storage of hazardous materials or materials that could become buoyant is prohibited in special flood hazard areas. New construction and substantial improvements within a development located in multiple flood zones shall meet the most stringent requirements and the highest base flood elevation. And lastly, enforceability, the ability of the floodplain administrator to issue a stop work order to any developer performing contrary to the new section 105 was added uh, to provide enforcement of the section. Staff recommends approval of these changes to Section 105, Flood Damage Prevention. I'm happy to take your questions now prior to the opening of the public hearing. And I'll go back to those seven categories. <coughs> the, the drainage on the street with the curb and gutter. Yes. On the street, that's the lowest part of the street, so water flows to it. Yes, the, right. that's right. Right. And so... What I've noticed is those houses near the drain, are their land is also the lowest part on yes. the street. Yes. Will that still be that way, or everyone's houses will be on a level plane? No, it, it, it's still that way. Okay. Uh, that's why we have the two requirements, either uh, 18 or 24 inches above the base flood elevation for the lowest floor, for the top of the slab, if you will, or the top of curb, uh, some, some lower uh, number, 18 inches, below the top of the curb, because if the house is kind of up on a hill, uh, then uh, the, the higher of the two uh, governs. So the, the construction of the streets is not going to change. Uh, it's, it's merely a, a measurement of either the, the elevation of the slab or the top of the curb, whichever is higher. If uh, if the uh, owner of the house is building and he wants to raise it several inches above the highest point, which let's say it's 24 inches, would that pose a problem to him? If the requirement's something less? No, they, if they ask for more. <coughs> if the requirement is 18 or 24 inches, whichever is higher. Yeah. And they say, you know what, I don't want to risk it, I want 30. <coughs> Well, they can, but that would be more expensive, of course. Uh, and the and the rule you can't flood your neighbor comes into play as well. So, Luis, uh, the city engineer, will have to make that call of uh, yes, that's higher, but it's too high. But isn't it like you guys brief this really well? I really want to commend the PNZ uh, city staff. And uh, Thank the you. people from the Texas A&M uh, watershed, but that was one of the questions, Mr. Uh, Commissioner, uh, what I was bringing up is that, yeah, I understand that the highest point hypothetically is supposed to be the backyard. Is it supposed to, the water supposed to flow from the backyard to the front yard to the street? Correct. Uh, normally, normally, yes. But yes. then people will throw in pools or they'll throw up gazebos, and yeah. it starts messing with. The, I think, uh, Luis, if you want to pop up here, that was one of your points. Uh, is that that can start messing with it hypothetically. I would want to build my house higher, like what Commissioner Morales is saying, and that is permissible, correct? Just because you start building things, it's going to start messing with the whole topography 
How about a yard? So it, it, I guess it depends on the lot size and the uh, setbacks of the property line with the neighbors, right? Uh, if, if, like Commissioner Morales said, uh, if, if a owner wants to build higher, he can or she can, but she, uh, they have to make sure that it, they're not going to flood their neighbors, right? Currently, there's a five foot, five feet uh, setback from property line to property line. If that's not sufficient, that has to be more than five feet so that the foundation of the house can be higher and you have a smooth slope towards the fence or the property line. Uh, now, uh, not always the backyard is the highest point of the house or, or the lot. Uh, it depends on the surrounding, right? Uh, uh, for example, if you have an alley in the back, uh, you can have some water flowing into the alley and the alley will, will flow it or will direct it to the, uh, the next street or the uh, perpendicular street, right? Have it go both ways. Okay. Have it go away from the back of your house and away from the front of your house. And if you don't have an alley, uh, which that's the alleys are not built anymore in new uh, subdivisions, right? So uh, the back of the house can be not the highest point, but can kind of have the same grade as the next house. And then uh, somewhere along the block will be a highest point in the back. And then that will be, uh, I guess, the highest point so that it drains towards the adjacent streets, parallel streets. Does that answer yeah. your question? Yeah. I, I think I've mentioned before that uh, the street filling up with water is exactly how we want the system to work. So the, the idea is, as Commissioner Mesmar was asking, the idea is that the gutter carries the water. So that you have the crest, you have the crest of the street, that, which is probably higher than, than the uh, top of the curb. Usually, be. Um, yeah. but that's not where you. That's not where the water is going to stay. Of course, it's going to go to the gutter, and so the gutter and and the curb act as a channel to move the water downhill. I mean, that's exactly how the system's supposed to work, to move move to the inlets. You had mentioned something <clears throat> I, I missed it. I caught it late. Um, how is that? How is the uh, CSC? Uh, study going to impact our decision right now they're well, doing sometime next may yeah we're, we're in a bit of a transition mm -hmm. uh so the way we wrote the change is to uh allow for uh the base level engineering data which is is, is uh, a website luis uses it all the time the, the developers engineers can use it all the time just plug in and and get the information <laughs> Um, but when we but when we get CSE's uh, new drainage plan and we uh, and we review it and approve it and you know make it official if you will, then that information will govern and CSE will provide us their H and H software that we will be able to give to developers engineers to use so that everybody's using the same data and the same. Uh, protocols, but we don't have it yet until uh, summer of next year. So we're in this we're in this in between time where we we'll, where we will use the base level engineering data as opposed to uh, the FEMA maps. Uh, the base level engineering information is more current. So, Craig, um, is it a little premature right now for us to be doing this, or um, no, not at all? No, no Mayor. Um, adding, or uh, I should say, replacing, replacing the BLE with the master drainage plan will be a one-sentence uh, change that, of course, we'll bring to commission. Um, but, but all of these other changes, uh, all of these other issues, we need to address now. Great. And, and we have had uh, great dialogue with, with all the parties and CSE, in fact, uh, made a little presentation uh, to the engineers to kind of explain what we were doing and, and they have endorsed uh, these changes. So we really have um, a great deal of, of agreement in the engineering community with what we're doing. 
and the developers, of course. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So I just want to reiterate um, what you stated earlier, that we appreciate all of the efforts and, and the assistance that we got at no cost to the, to the city to be able to bring these changes for our community, make sure that the community is safe and they can um, have confidence in their homes that they are building now and into the future. Yes, so, ma'am. Dana, Dana did a great job. She's got a wealth of, of uh, knowledge and information and knows to reach out to people. Uh, it was, it was, she was a real gem to find. Wonderful. Are there any other questions for Craig before we open it up to the public hearing? Nope. All right. Um, so at this time, we'll open this up for a public hearing. Is there anyone that wishes to speak for or against the adoption of this ordinance? Having no one here to speak, we'll close the public hearing. And do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> Item six, public hearing and possible action to approve the one-year action plan budget for fiscal year 2023 to 2024 <coughs> of the Community Development Block Grant Program and the fiscal year 2023 to 2024 of the Home Investment Partnership Program. Ms. Sandy? Mayor, on the last item, we didn't read the caption. Is that going to make a difference, oh. Mark? We didn't. I, we need. We need to go back and do that. This was on the right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of the city of Arlington amending the code of ordinances, chapter one hundred five, on flood damage prevention by amending the Arlington flood damage prevention requirements, providing for a repealer and several several devices. So moved. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you for that, Gabe. Go right ahead. Hi. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, and staff. Um, as you all know, the city of Harlingen <laughs> is an entitlement community for CDBG and home funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, this year, our allocation amounts for CDBG and home are CDBG is $834,463 um, and home is $366,472. Those amounts are lower than last year. Uh, seems like every year it's dwindling. Uh, either there's more entitlement communities or Congress just uh, decides to fund less for, for these uh, projects or programs. Um, we had a uh, NOFA. We published a NOFA, Notice of Funding Availability, um, on March the 27th. Uh, on May the 4th, applications were due at 4 p.m. We did receive eight applications for uh, nonprofit or from nonprofit organizations. Uh, for the uh, public services, and we also received five applications for projects within the city and two applications for the home program. Um, this Community Development Advisory Board had their um, public hearing and presentations <coughs> on May the 25th and then had a workshop on June the 8th. Um, during the workshop, they established the recommendations that you have before you. I can go ahead and go one at a time, or I know that there's a public hearing, so I'm not sure. It's, uh, at this point, I present, right? Yes. OK. So um, I have the numbers on my phone. I'm sorry. So, so for public service agencies, or actually, I'm just going to go down this list here. So it shows a CDBG allocation of 834,463, the home allocation of 366,472, uh, anticipated program income from our housing assistance loans is $33,693.60. What that is, is uh, in prior years, the housing Re rehabilitation reconstruction program that we now have, um, it used to be a loan program. So the homes that were built were actually um, given to the owners of the <coughs> loans. So we're still collecting payments for some of those homes from prior years. Uh, we anticipate that we will collect about $33,693 um, for the year from those payments. So that goes back right back into the same program. It's, it's considered program income. So uh, the combined total allocations is $1,234,628.60. Uh, the uh, recommendations 
as uh, established by the board were Vestal Park Sports Lighting, uh, 219,973. They applied for the Parks Department, applied for that amount for phase three of the sports lighting. So what the committee decided was to go ahead and uh, recommend funding fully so that they can complete the project. Uh, we also had an application from parks for Vestal Park parking lot addition in the amount of 233,000. Um, they chose not to recommend funding for that, just in, in an effort to complete at least one project. Uh, the Parks Department also applied for Victor Park Sports Lighting Project in the amount of 162635 and that also was not recommended for funding due to the amount, obviously. For the what? I'm sorry, Victor Park, I didn't catch. Victor Park uh, Sports Lighting. The lighting. Yes. Okay. And it was for how much? 162635 <laughs> Um, the planning department and the, in uh, partnership with the police department also applied for code compliance, clearance and demolition uh, to demolish the, um, I forget the name of it, but it's the motel on, ty on uh, Tyler. <laughs> they applied for 140000 for that and uh, the committee also chose not to recommend funding for that. There's just not enough to go around. Is this the first time that they've applied for that? For that particular um, project, yes. This is the first time you guys have really tried to get information. Yes, okay. correct. Um, and the last but not least, uh, our department applied for community development rehab reconstruction program, and uh, they did recommend to they did recommend to fund that one for 280000 for 2795 That's on the list. It's kind of not in order, I'm sorry. The, uh, what, what is that? I'm sorry, is that the, for the homes, the, the reconstruction yes. of the homes? Reconstruction of the homes, yes. <laughs> like the two that we did? Correct. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's a wonderful program. I just want to make sure I'm following along. Go yes, ahead. thank you. I, I should have submitted okay. this You're form. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, for the public service agencies, um, I'm gonna, that's right uh, under the Vestal Park here. We had Amigos del Valle applied for 65,000 and the board recommended uh, zero for them. Area agency uh, on aging, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Repeat, I, I'm having trouble here. Amigo. I'm sorry, Amigos oh, del Valle? Yeah, yeah. They applied for 65000 for the Meals on Wheels program. Um, Area Agency on Aging applied for 20000 and that was also not recommended for funding. Which is, what, is, what is that agency? Area Agency on Aging. They're uh, Lower Rio Grande Valley Community. Lower, I'm sorry, LRGBDC. That's what you gave me right there. I put a check mark as to what has been funded and then X by what has not been. Thank you. Those are just the programs. Okay. An area agency on aging, they are for seniors and they do what for seniors? Um, they fund uh, medical um, medication and medical equipment. And they requested 20,000? 20,000. 20, and that was not uh, recommended for funding. That's through the Development Council, correct? Yes. <clears throat> okay, well, while they're talking, let me ask. Sure. Uh, for all the community development block grants, What's that number up there? 834,463. Okay. And how much did we get in requests? Do you have that total? I do. Total, well, I have them. Um, for nonprofits, the 
we can only fund 125,169 and we had a total of 281,304 in 281 yes and we can only have 125 right that's for the nonprofits <coughs> and for the project that's, un that's under your public services category correct public yeah. services uh, for the project so there's we not enough money to go around exactly that's why okay and and casa is here Correct. And I appreciate all their support. Did they get their application in on time? Yes. And it was a fine application? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, they had to, uh, the board had to factor many things into their decision. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, you know, they could either fund small amounts to all of them or try to actually make a difference in, you know, what, what they're asking for. So, okay. Then, then I have a, another question. So item number seven is coming up mm -hmm. for y you all to put in fire hydrants. Does that take away from the nonprofits? No, that would be from <laughs> okay, the project. That's a different block of this money. Right, correct. That would be out of the projects, either out of um, Vestal Park or the Rehabilitation Reconstruction Project. Mm -hmm. You know what may be easier? Uh, just, we may want to table this, move on to the next item real quick, or the next two items. So this sheet, that, these sheets that you gave me, it may be easier for if all of us were to have them. Yeah, that would uh, Amanda, if you can do this sheet, I don't want to know how, who voted for what. I just need to know the conflict points in green, mm -hmm. and then what the final recommendation was. You want this back? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner. Can I get a, a copy this, exactly the way this is so that I can review it? <clears throat> this is, uh, I'm doing exactly what I was asked to do to a certain degree. Uh, in reference to this, <clears throat> I would say leave it as is. And we'll go back. I talked to Ms. Sandy uh, yesterday. And they can do substantial amend amendments with their board and come back with a second recommendation. I'm fine with that. All I just want is just so that everyone can follow along to what Sandy's saying. Yeah. I'm just saying we'll come back to this today, right now. Let's just move on to the next item. Give staff enough time to make the copies they have. Okay. Bring us the paperwork back, and we're all on the same page. That's all I want. So you want copies for me? Yeah, well, essentially. Uh, Josh, can you come make copies for us, please? So, Are you going to do um, it? Okay. Robert, if I email you this, this is easier than that. It's just it's one page. Um, Okay. Of course, Sandy, do you want to help her make those copies? Because you know exactly what I'm asking for. And you can come right back up, and we'll take you up again the moment you're back. Um, I have all of that in one page. Oh, that's even better. And I'm going to email it to Robert so he can just print them. Right. That'll be easier. <coughs> yes. Okay, but, but, that, but um, Sandy, I do agree with, with Commissioner Lopez. We want to make sure that... This is important, and we want to make sure the entire commission's got in front of them um, the the allocation, and we can we can follow along with you. Right. So, did you want to step out to to assist with making those copies? Is sure. That what we're doing? Do you want sure. to just temporarily table this yeah. and come back? You were just we're, we're just gonna I'm just gonna skip it for now. Okay. And yeah, we don't need to table it. I'm just gonna move out a little out of order, just to, and we'll come right back to you. Okay. Sure. We'll just go Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Item 8, um, discussion regarding proposed amendments <coughs> to the sign ordinance to allow wind flags and feather flag signs with limitations. Javier? Good evening. So there is a, there is a, an interest in amending the sign ordinance. A lot of some business owners have, have been asking uh, for this. So these are known as feather flag signs, and some of you may not recognize them because they're totally prohibited in Harlingen. But if you uh, drive to other communities, uh, you will see them uh, in the commercial corridors. The cell phone companies are really like uh, promoting their, their uh, cell phones or their companies uh, using feather flag signs. This is a nice one for a church that I found in the city of Far. So uh, even church or institutional users will use them to promote their church or their institutional use. 
So these are uh, wind flag signs that car, you know, sometimes car labs or other businesses use. Uh, for these, we're proposing to just allow them, if, if, if they're attached to a pole, to just simply allow them uh, no permits, no, uh, li no uh, limits. On the, feather, on the feather flag signs, uh, in the language in the ordinance, we're proposing to, to be limited to just one feather flag sign for, for business. So this is a, you know, feather flag signs don't last, don't last forever. So, so then after, after a year or two, this is what they look like. So we wrote in the ordinance that if the feather flag sign is false in this, this repair, such as this, uh, cost compliance will pay a, friend, a friendly visit to have them remove it, and then they can apply for, for a new one. So if we don't have regulations, this is uh, what we end up with, right? Companies putting a bunch of feather flag signs, uh, really cluttering the corridors. So the proposal in your in your or in your packet is to just one feather flag uh, allowed for business. So we added some definitions to clearly define what they what they are. <coughs> Uh, so what we're saying is that you, uh, they will be, the feather flag signs will be allowed, but you have, you have to apply for a permit. Um, <coughs> the, 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 flag, the, the feather flag sign will have to be on private property. We will not allow it in the right of way. We will route the uh, permit application to engineering to make sure it's not a traffic hazard. If, if, uh, if engineering approves the location, then we could issue the permit. There will be an inspection to make sure that it's uh, in, properly installed. Uh, we put a provision in the ordinance that uh, if we have, if we know of inclement uh, weather coming in, such a, uh, so the, all these feather flag f will be registered with the city. If we know that there's a hurricane coming in, we're going to be uh, contacting these business owners to have them uh, remove it. How are they uh, secured to the ground? They're yeah. just stuck in the ground. They, yeah, no, they they have to be, I think it's like two or three feet in inside the ground, but there will be. Uh, a permit. No, they have no, to how are they anchored into the ground, I guess? They, yeah, they just have like a pole that goes, I think, three feet. Okay, so on a very windy day. Yeah, so in a, normal a windy day, in a normal windy day, they withstand. Yeah. But in case of a hurricane, yes, we want the business to pick them up uh, because they could. They're, they're generally not anchored down, Commissioner. <laughs> they're not anchored down. question is, do we, uh, Gabe, this is for you, oh. do we really want to be spending city resources anytime we have a hurricane having <laughs> Javier go and start calling all these people to take down your feather signs and we should be having Javier do probably more productive things with this? Uh, no. Hurricane also, preparation. Uh, also, this uh, went before the Planning and Sony Commission last week and they were not receptive to this ordinance uh, at all. Uh, they like the way it is uh, now where they're, they're not uh, allowed completely. Uh, they, they, you know, and they asked that if the city commission uh, wants to adopt this ordinance that they be allowed temporarily only, not, not indefinite. Uh, so uh, it could be three months or six months. Uh, but one of the board members said it should be only for op openings, uh, grand opening of a business. And only, on, only in cases like that should we allow feather flag signs. So, so PNC did not like this at all. They're not in favor so, of this at all. No, this is a planning and zoning commission. I, I, I think that, um, and I'm trying to think of the, the, the planning and zoning, but um, I'm a small business owner. I don't know who else. I think I'm the only one on, on the, and you're a small business owner. So I spoke, I've spoken with a lot of small businesses a lot um, during, while I was campaigning, now with the Small Business Board. Um, and I know Beverly's here. Um, also, the big concern is the inability to advertise their business um, and wanting to be able to take advantage of opportunities of traffic so that way new businesses have that <coughs> exposure. Um, 
the biggest gripe that I hear is that there are flags that are flown from businesses that ha are in our community that have, a, you know, they're well established and they have big budgets. There are commercials on TV and they have flags flying. And they say, hey, I'm a small, you know, mom and pop <coughs> shop. Why can't I have a flag as well? And so it doesn't seem like we are consistent in what, <coughs> what our rules are now because there are flags that are in the community. With the feather um, signs, I think that we should definitely do it, but I don't know that this is the right way because I don't, I agree with Commissioner Lopez. That's not something that the city wants to be um, like utilizing. Damaging. Yes, the, the resources of, the, of, of our staff to go out there and say, hey, it's, you know, it's going to rain today. Make sure you bring in your sign, those kinds of things. Um, I'm also concerned with liability, right? If this fly, if the sign flies and, and hits a vehicle or something. So I think that this needs to be really <coughs> going back to the drawing board and, and, and listening to the small business owners and helping them, but in a way that puts that responsibility back on the owner of the business that says that, you know, maybe they need to sign some kind of waiver saying that they're going to take that responsibility. We're not going to be over there knocking on their <coughs> door. Maybe it means they bring it in every night. Maybe it's temporary. I don't know what that looks like, but I think that this is just not, I'm glad that you guys are, are entertaining this and, and, and wanting to help small businesses, but I think that this is probably just not the right way to go about it because we don't have the resources to be able to do that. But I don't want for this to die and for us not to help small businesses because that is a huge need. I spoke with a barber that <coughs> has been in, in, um, in our community for 40 years, 45 years, and he, his biggest gripe is that the city of Harlingen won't let me put a flag outside so I can say I have like some kind of special or something. And he says, you know, so he, he, he doesn't want to do anything with the, in the community because he feels like we're not supportive of his <coughs> business, right? And so I want to be able to help him and say, hey, yes, you can, but in a responsible way. Um, but I don't know that so this is So maybe it. we could amend the ordinance to, to allow this, which are wind flag signs, but hold off hold off on the feather flag signs. Mm -hmm. So at least we can tell the business, okay, we're, we're not allowing the feather flag, but you could do something like this. And uh, so it, the ordinance could be to do that. So why would it be, I'm sorry, go ahead. So we could amend the ordinance to do that, to at least allow wind flag signs. Uh, I was just noticing at the State of the City event that the new Hilton restaurant has a beautiful Fla uh, wind flag signs for the Hilton. That's and, my point. And, yeah. and that's a beautiful flag, but it's technically illegal. So, so. Um, and, and, and they're all over. They're all yeah. over the city, to, yeah, be, so to I, be fair. So I think that's a good <laughs> change for now yeah. to allow wind flag signs. That's a, I think that's a good change to do now and hold off on the feather flag. That, that's a, I think that's a doable, that's fair, because we want to make sure, I mean, if they're going to take, uh, put in the investment, to, it's a permanent structure, it's safe, no issues, I think that as long as it's not obstructing, and I, I know our guys will make sure that, that's, that, that that happens, um, but I don't want to, <clears throat> to, to, to not um, fill the need for the little guy that can't afford um, to, to put a flag. You're not going to yeah. see a flag downtown, I mean, right? I mean, this is, where are they going <coughs> to place that big yeah. flag? But a lot, of, um, a lot of other businesses could do something like this, right. and that, that gives them a venue. We have a lot of little restaurants that pop up, and they're, they mm -hmm. want to put something out there. And, a, little, uh, a little flag. Yeah, so this is about making Harlingen small business friendly. So I don't know what, what that looks like if there's... Uh, maybe this is something that the small business <coughs> board, um, Beverly, can look into and, and make some recommendations um, on how we can we can we can do that. If that if the commission is open to something like that, I like the idea of the feather um, advertisements. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we should be limiting them to only have the flag. I mean, I like your 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 you know limitations like one per per business. And I agree with the mayor saying that they should have their own um, liability, you know, sign off a waiver and all that. But I don't think we should just automatically just say, no, you can't have the feather, um, the feather um, flags. I, I think that's, I know I've, I've, I've actually had some people reach out to me. In fact, the barber, George. <laughs> probably the same one. No, no, no that's another one. Uh, he's actually reached out to me. That's one thing he's, he's mentioned, uh, mentioned to me constantly. Like, Why can't we have these? Why can't we have these? 
And um, I'm like, I, I, I honestly told him, I don't know. So I think we should allow that, but um, I'm, open to, I'm open to what you guys said, to having some kind of waiver or something, but I do feel that they should have the, the feather flags as well. Why limit them just to a flag? If they want to advertise, let them advertise, whether it's a little flag or a feather flag. I mean, it's up to them. Let them decide. But liability should be on them, not us. So, so potentially, maybe um, <coughs> with with is this an action item or no, is this no, just, no, it's just, just for discussion, discussion? Right, just discussion. Yeah. Okay, so so maybe you know that's something that that we can consider. Definitely, the language on the on the flag seemed great, um, and then maybe if you want to talk to Beverly and see if if maybe this is something the small business board can brainstorm on how. Uh, after all, they're small business owners; they'll know how it impacts them directly. Yeah, we can uh, go to the next meeting and. Welcome and now. I think you're next on the meeting, too. Oh, okay. So it'll be perfect. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll work on something. And uh, well, hopefully in a month or two, we'll have something for you to adopt. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. OK, is, is um, Ms. Sandy back? back? OK, wonderful. Um, we're going to go ahead and go on back to item 6. <coughs> This is phenomenal. Thank you. Did, nice. Thank did everybody get a copy of the handout? Everybody mm -hmm. has one? Okay. And just um, FYI, Sandy, if we can next year, this is perfect. In yes. <laughs> in I apologize for that. I was at a conference all I know you're last so week, hard. and I was uh, not fully prepared. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're doing a great job. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. You can continue on where you left off. Okay, so we did email that same uh, form to MIS so they can put it up here. Uh, we were at, I don't know if you want to go ahead and start over up, up on top with, that way we can follow the, this form that you just got. Sure. Um, up in the blue section, that's the <clears throat> public service agencies. <clears throat> Sorry. As I explained, we can only fund 15% of the total allocation amount, which is 125169 and $0.45. Um, we did get applications totaling 281304 So as you can see, the board had to um, do away with some of the applications just to be able to fully fund some of the others. So we're 176,000 shy of requests. Correct. Sandy, mm -hmm. um, I have a question, and just because this is this is new for me, um, we have a lot of nonprofits in the community, um, and one thing that has always <coughs> kind of concerned me is that I don't know if these nonprofits know that they can apply. Um, how how we are ensuring that we're being accessible to all. One that I, mm -hmm. I know that, like the, the Literacy Center for Harlingen, it's the only one in Cameron County. They've been in business for over 40 years. I know they have a new director, but I spoke with the, the previous director, and uh, Miss Linda. Right. And, um, and she, yeah, she's amazing. And yeah. I know that they struggle a lot, and they provide GED services, ESL classes. They're the only ones in Cameron County. Um, they're getting people ready to go into the military, preparing them for their exams. Are they not, are they, because I, she, you know, when I talked to her, she was wondering, why, why don't we get any help from the city of Harlingen? I said, well, I don't know, babe. <laughs> so, um, um, but, but my, my point is, it looks like they didn't apply. They did not. Um, they are on our email list. Mm -hmm. So they did receive the notice of funding availability. Um, I did receive a call from them. I don't remember. I think it was a board member because the executive director was no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, she wanted to apply for funding for um, the, the building where they're at. I believe they have like uh, a suite or next to it that they um, lease out. So she wanted to renovate that building so that they could lease it out. And well, that can't, I mean, we can't right. fund that. Um, I, you know, if it were for salaries, you know, it has to be a direct benefit to um, the low-income 
persons receiving the the uh, services. Okay. So um, I told her that wasn't eligible. I did give her a list of the items that they could apply for, salaries or even, you know, rent for where they're at. I don't know if the, the building where they're at, they may own it. Um, but they ended up not applying. Okay. So, um, yeah, we do send out. Uh, we have a, a pretty big list, uh, email list, that we send out the, the notice of funding availability to. Mm -hmm. it, you know, probably not all inclusive, but we also publish in the, in the Valley Morning Star, which really nobody reads. But we are required to do that, and we also you, you said that. I, I didn't yeah. say that. The, the, the reporter, when oh he reports this, is not going to like that. Yes, sorry. I did not. I did not say that. Um, how, however, I think I'm that so maybe, sorry about that. Maybe I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, we have to publish. HUD right. requires it. But you know what I mean is they don't see the um, the uh, publications for public hearings and and that. I mean, right. It, it, we rarely get people into our public hearings and we rarely get people you know making public comments because they don't see those sections they like to read the yeah. stories well i have a ton so. of ideas and we can talk later um, yes and, and on how we can more awareness um but but that was that was my concern about about the literacy center now um gasa i mean they do we've heard phenomenal um work right and i know Correct. that they've done this kind of work for a long time and they do serve a very vulnerable population and they are um, advocates for, for, for these kids that can't speak for themselves. Um, has the city ever uh, allocated any funds for them? Yes. So, okay, so is this the only time that um, they have not received funds? I've been here five years and every year, um, yes, we've funded, they have been funded, yes. So how did that balancing go to, to I mean, it's just interesting to me that this would be you know, not uh, something that would get funded if it was if it had in the past. Given that I think that they're go when you when you make these decisions, it's based on need, right? Um, right. So the board had to um, weigh out different um, areas of uh, of the agencies. In this case, we have two other agencies that applied that also serve. It's not obviously not the same population, but it is for abuse neglected children. In Maggie's house? Uh, Maggie's house. Um, as far as I've been here, they've never, they had never applied. I've uh, okay. been here for five years, and this year they did apply, and so did um, Family Crisis Center. So are these so, new recipients, those two? No, the only one that's new is Maggie's house. I was told by <clears throat> by one of my appointees on the board that um, GASA did not um, um, produce all their financials to the board. Is that correct? So we have a list of items that are required. Um, it, it's it's the same list that's been in effect for for a while. Um, and there's we ask that they submit 13 copies already hole punched. We create a binder for the um, um, for the board members. <laughs> And so, just as they submit it, that's how we put it in the in the binders for the board members. So, some of the agencies submitted a little more than was requ requested or required, um, and that during the board meeting, that's what the board were they were looking at at that. Um, for example, Amigos del Valle submitted like their whole audit, so their packet was. I mean, 13 copies of the whole audit. We do require it. We require one copy for ourselves, but whatever they submit 13 copies of is what the board gets. So that's, you know, I, unfortunately, maybe in the future we can just make sure to take out extra things or, you know, if there's something missing for, for one of the agencies, we need to make copies of it and put it in the binder. But that's... Um, I think some of the agencies submitted a little more than they, that than they needed to, and that you know that's what they were looking at. So, but in the application itself, there also is a, a section where um, they put in their projected budget for the year and then their projected expenditures. So they did have an opportunity to look at that the board, all the board members, for every agency. Um, I'm not sure if that answers the question. 
Were any of the allocations increased from the previous year? From the ones that were selected? Uh, the only one was Boys and Girls Club. I think last year they received 34,000 or, so, or 35. <clears throat> and the others remain the same, except for um, Maggie's house, right? It is new. Maggie's house is new. Amigos del Valle did get funded last year, <clears throat> and so did Area Agency on Aging. I'm sorry? Area Agency on Aging, they also got funded last year. Okay. And Amigos del Valle did also. Was there more funding last year? A little bit. Was yes. a little bit? It's well, 56,000 <clears> total. <throat> like the total allocation amount was for 834, 463. And last year was 56,000 more than that. So I think it was 887, right? So then we only get 15% of that amount for public services. I, I will say that my years being here, the money from the federal government declines in stair step. It's not gradual, but it's stair step down, mm -hmm. down, down. Correct. And all these organizations are worthy. They all do fabulous work. I agree. And it's this is painful. But. Exactly. So. Gabe, is there any way that we can, or any other streams of? money that we can help these organizations with. For example, like CASA does a phenomenal job. I want to make sure we get the money. Um, and so is there any way we can take control <coughs> to give to Peter? For example, those are fishes, right? We, they have 38,000. If we could take the 30 from them, give it to CASA, and then somehow figure out how to get Loaves and Fishes that 30 back. What, what are you funding Loaves and Fishes for? Uh, 38,220. No. What, what are they going to use it for? Uh, for um, salaries for uh, the <clears throat> chef who feeds the home. Feeds, yes. We, we've, we've never funded staff uh, positions for them. We've usually funded uh, uh, meals for the homeless or assistance for immigrants. Um, we don't normally fund. Uh, salaries, not to the general fund. It's got to be through the EDC that we do salaries for retention of jobs. But the immigrants, that's a separate fund, right? right. We, it's, we, we did an allocation. Uh, it's, it's general fund, but it's for specific use. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we do submit that to, uh, to try to get reimbursed, but we generally don't because we don't spend enough. So to answer your question is we we probably can't fund this particular use of funding. But we can fund we can give them thirty thousand dollars in like services in kind or whatever that they can then reallocate that money to go towards the salary, correct? Um, <coughs> not not from the general fund, no. Or any other revenue stream. We we'd have to maybe talk to the EDC about helping them with with uh, funding salaries. Might be able to use a 4B. I'm not really sure. I have to go back and look at that okay. one. Okay, so Sandy, I have a question. Can any of these numbers be changed or this is presented as is? As far as the recommendations? Yes. Oh, that lies on on the commission. You you can change them. Okay, and yes. what was Boys and Girls Club prior funding? Uh, last year, I believe they received about 34 or 35. Okay, so they're getting 51.9, mm -hmm. almost call it 51.2. Would, I'll ask you, gentlemen here, would you be comfortable taking 11.949 and 45 cents and allocating it to CASA? I know it's not a ton of money, I, I but it's a, better than zero. I, I got to <coughs> interject here. Yeah. Um, on the next item, we're looking at fire hydrants for a Correct. particular, okay. So along with that, that's not part of this year, but right. one of the things that I'm going to ask of Sandy is that they can, <clears throat> we had discussed this, they can do substantial amendments. Along with that, there was an item that was brought up to me by Mr. Mendez, okay, and that is there's some <clears throat> money that was going to be used at Victor Park that's no longer being used. Okay, right. if we get that, but it starts off with them, 
then it gets get back to us. What the presentation that's next is on fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so we're going to have to, they will have to do some moving around of funds. And along with that, one of the things that I'm hearing from not you, but from Gus and everybody else, they should be able to move some, make some adjustments so where CASA and maybe somebody else can also get funded. Not much, but they can get some type of funding, which that would alleviate us from making decisions right now to where their board, once they start making these substantial uh, amendments, which would be for this one and using some funds from um, the previous uh, budget year, so they can come back to us and say, okay, we've hurt you. They, they understand what, we're, what we need or what we're asking for, okay? They can come back to us with a different set of recommendations, and I can <clears throat> almost assure you we will be happier because they will be able to fund cost a few bucks. Uh, what I'm looking at is doing the fire hydrants, and, and perhaps maybe they can move some funds around. But until they get back to work and do – what they need to do for a substantial amendments. It'll be one, could be two, could be three, but that's on their court that I cannot really make a suggestion because I don't know enough. And by that, I mean, she's gonna look at the numbers, she'll sit down with Javier and say what they have allotted last year that was not being used, how can they move those funds into this budget year? Okay. Sorry. Sandy, what, what, what year are you using? Is he talking about the, for the Victor Park? Victor Park was 2020-2021. Uh, and were you at 15% for that allocation? Uh, so what I was going to say was that the expenditure amounts for the uh, nonprofits, like that's a project outside of the 15%, so we wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Um, last year, for example, we took an amount from Sunshine Haven and did exactly that. We did a substantial amendment and gave whatever was for Sunshine Haven to Loaves and Fishes and Area <coughs> Agency and Aging. I came, I think it was in March, uh, with that substantial amendment, but the 15% would have to stay there in yeah. the public services. What, Sandy, what are you funding Boys and Girls Club for? Um, it's for memberships for the low income uh, they submit, the backup that they submit is for the uh, children at Lemoyne Gardens, so for their memberships. What does that mean exactly? Like how much is a membership? What, is, what, what? So I can it's, understand. It is 200 per child and it's for, it's really, it's not like a, a, a fee that they charge. But that's, that's what they have come up with as far as, like, that's what it costs to serve that child. But we have, because we have to stay with the low income, um, we have to serve the low income. So those are the beneficiaries that are submitted uh, for. So in other words, I mean, uh, um, instead of serving 300 or whatever amount that is, they would be serving less of, um, of, of those children. I, 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 no, I, I, I don't envy um, this <laughs> board or your position. They are all wonderful organizations. I don't know how you um, stretch the money to cover. I think, you know, Commissioner Morales had some great ideas, but I, I realize that those are different buckets of money, so this is all we have. Um, just the mere fact that you've got 281,000 requested and 125,000 to give. Um, it almost sounds like when my kids want stuff, right? And you don't have enough. <laughs> you got to pick and choose, but this is more important because this is ha ha helping individual um, folks. And so I, I don't know what this commission um, intends on doing, but it does look like I would highly encourage uh, to see what can be done what if you shave off a little bit from each one to make a bucket of money for CASA? I mean, you know, it, it, say instead of 51000 they get um, 45000 and then the next one gets, you know, instead of 15000 you get um, 13000 I mean, there's got to be a way to, to do it and to be fair 
Um, not everybody's going to get what they wanted, but at least, you know, we're trying trying to to right. help. I, I have a question for an attorney. So they're presenting this with the different buckets and then how each bucket is being spent, the blue bucket, the green bucket, the orange bucket. If we approve this, can they change it after we approve it or, ap or if we approve this, is it set in stone for the next year? We can make amendments, but we would have to come back to they can make amendments, but they've got to go back to the advisory board and then have a public hearing, go through the notice process. process. But but they still have to stay within the constitutional mm -hmm. uh, parameters of, like, say, public services. Has to stay at 15%. You can't go above that. So. Okay. And, mm. is, is there a time critical deadline for you? Will this slow this down? Will we miss federal funding because we dilly dally and debate? Yes. Well, so we could lose some of this or all this money if we delay? We need to make a, a decision tonight uh, because then we have to go back to the board to do <coughs> another public hearing. We have to publish, give a 30 day comment period. And I actually looked at the calendar with Commissioner Morales to see if there was any possible way to squeeze. But because of the deadlines to submit um, the executive summaries and the backups, um, I wouldn't make it to the next meeting. It would have to be the next one. So, and, and would that satisfy wherever the whatever federal agency is allocating this money? Th this won't jeopardize any of our money. The action plan is due to HUD August the fifteenth. August fifteenth. Yes. That's drop dead. Yes. Okay. So if if we don't submit action plan on that day, then we don't get the funding. Yes. Okay. So, so yes, the commissioner's question is, can we do it? Because if we're talking and we don't have the time to do it, then we should. Yeah, should, yeah I, we should I don't want to blow it all up. So do you have enough time? Should, this, should the commission um, have some recommendations for the board to make some amendments for you to, to satisfy the requirements of, of the posting and the hearing and the public comment and all of that, do you have enough time to do that to come back to us so that way you make your deadline? Um, actually, y'all can make those changes today. Um, the thing is, you cannot add an additional um, project that was not properly presented to the board for consideration. Uh, so if there was anything that is not on this list that you, all, that you wanted to add now, that's when I would have to go back to the board and have them review um, that project and then come back with their recommendation. Okay, then I think I misunderstood you. So yeah. they, the, 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 the commission can make amendments to the presented um, organizations and yes. that it can be con con confirmed and approved here. That can be made. Uh, you need here. a decision tonight, right? Yes. Well, then, I, then we should do that. We should mm -hmm. definitely not waste time um, if that's the case. Uh, excuse me. I want to make sure, are you killing the fire hydrant project? That has nothing to no, do with no, this. No, okay. no, no. There's, there's different buckets. Okay. Go for it. Right. So, um, is there any, um, oh, I think we have a public hearing, right? Right. Uh, did you want to continue with the, uh, I think um, you did a, a, an excellent job. Now I can I fully understand. You need her to go through each one. Anybody? So are we going to take anything from any of the other ones to give the CASA? We're just going to leave it the way it is. No, I, 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 we can, but we need to open it up for public hearing. Um, I, I, is, is there a recommendation? So we have to change you have one. We can't act on it until after the public hearing, but yeah, I, there's yes. room for discussion. I would make a recommendation since boys and Girls Club got, got 38 mm -hmm. and uh, it last year, or, okay, right. 35 last year, and yes. now it's up to 51. I would say we take 11, 949, and 45 cents and allocate that to CASA. I, talking to Gabe right now, he came up with a solution that I think is viable. I would say that we give CASA the full 30,000 for it from Boys and Girls Club, and then we can work it on the back end, correct? Oh, well, what does that mean? Um, we have separate contracts with the Boys and Girls Club. We would need to, if you want to do that, we would have to increase the other contracts that we have to try to cover for that, for that loss tonight. But 
the commission would have to agree that during the budget process would have to give them an extra thirty thousand or whatever that amount is. Okay, so so we can work around that right. for the boys and girls club. Right. Okay. You can, but but that's a separate uh, budget item to be discussed later during the budget process. Well, just don't forget. And their con <laughs> their contract is for what boys and girls club? Uh, we have two. One is for uh, uh, youth services, and the other one is through parks. Uh, what is that for? Have you? I don't recall. Oh, teens. Okay. So we have to increase that and let them take money from that particular uh, contract and then use it for what they need, but not necessarily for this one. <clears throat> they will determine how they use that additional thirty thousand, yes. and yeah. they could use that to supplement this. That's what I'm saying. We just can't put that in there. And the contract will just be for the youth services and for the teen services. That's it. Right. So, Gabe, are you comfortable with that? Uh, you it, could you could pull it off. Well, we can, but but it's going to take a vote from the commission to do it. Right. I, I can't do that on my own. During right. the budget process? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll make a motion <coughs> to approve. Let's, let's, let's hold off public, on that. You have to have a public hearing. We need a public okay. hearing first. Um, is there any other questions for Sandy? If you all have any other questions, like on the other sections also, um, like the uh, projects, we had five that were submitted and only two were re being recommended. That is the funds going to Vesco <coughs> Park, right? Right. And, and we're talking about the green bucket. Right. And exactly. then we have, um, that's okay. And then the last one is uh, the yellow section. That's the home program. Uh, we did have one application from Harlingen Community Development Corporation. And they were wanting to fund um, for down payment assistance for uh, a development that they, that they own. I believe it's Mesquite. Estates or Mesquite, uh, I, I don't have the name correctly, but it's uh, north of um, Home Depot. Tell me, tell me about which, where I want to follow along with you. Is it 274000 Right, the yellow section. Okay, and that is for what? Home buyers? Uh, first time home buyers, down payment assistance. So uh, in our department, we, we also administer a down payment assistance program. Uh, but that's, of course, that's citywide, and that's it's on a first come, first serve basis. Um, we serve as long as they're low income and they qualify, they're able to um, obtain a mortgage. Uh, we have the down payment assistance that we assist them with. <coughs> but we did have a Harlingen Community Development Corporation, which is um, a, a local. They're they're on Harrison, a local nonprofit. They they also applied for the same program but for their clients. Sandy, didn't we have issues with HUD and that organization some time ago? So why are yes. we doing that then? No, she's not. Well, she's the, not. Board recommended, not. the board recommended zero, so I just wanted to, oh, okay, yes. Right. I, I didn't want to leave out that, you okay, know. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong one then. It says Community Development Department Affordable Housing. That's our own. That's ours, yes. 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 Okay, all right, mm -hmm. <clears throat> great. She's not getting this. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the okay. Any more questions? Yeah. You weren't expecting a hot bench, were you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I was a little bit. Oh. Well, you're doing a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, it, since we have no other questions, we'll go ahead and open this up for the public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak <clears throat> for? or against um, the adoption of um, the requested um, budget. Yes. And please state your name um, for the record. Yes, Dora Martinez. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you this evening. Again, my name is Dora Martinez. I am the Executive Director of CASA for Cameron and Willacy Counties. CASA did apply for CDBG funding for fiscal year 23-24, and the Community Development Advisory Board has submitted their recommendation, which did not include funding for CASA. As a nonprofit, we do apply for various grants every year, both federal and state funds. They are all subject to cuts, and these amounts fluctuate from one year to the next. The grants that CASA applied for is based on the need for this funding to provide the services that we do. It goes without saying that we would not apply for these funds if we did not need them. When cuts are made, we obviously have to make up that uh, deficit using or utilizing another grant. 
All of the amounts that are in the uh, grant application are projected amounts for the next funding year, and we have not received notification of what our award amounts will be, if any. So the funding we applied for in the amount of 30,000 is to fund a portion of one volunteer supervisor who works only Harlingen cases. This fiscal year so far, we have served 44 households with 98 children, and they include the following outcomes. 13 children were reunified with parent after successful completion of all the requirements. 16 children were placed permanently with the relative and 12 children were adopted. A case before the Child Protection Court can last anywhere from 12 months to several years for various reasons. Regardless of the amount of time, CASA is often the one consistent person involved in that child's life despite the many placement changes and the people involved, even if it means years. We have a track record of full compliance with reporting requirements. Our annual audits are clear of any findings. Our quality assurance reviews with all funders and state membership standards all reflect that we are in full compliance. For purposes of clarification, I'd like to add that our application that we submitted, along with the required supporting documents, were submitted according to the instructions. The letters of support and the additional budgets that have been referenced tonight, and I know were referenced before, uh, were not part of the 13 copies that were required. I do have 13 copies here of that, as well as the letters of support, which is only two that the document requires you to submit, if anybody would like to receive a copy of that. Our board of directors has worked hard to meet their responsibility in fundraising and <coughs> governance oversight of our agency. In my 19 years with CASA, I have never experienced the city of Harlingen not consider us for funding. Go ahead. I understand that we may not receive the full amount requested and we will work with the amount that we are awarded. Please reconsider the recommendation that is before you to include at least a portion of the requested funding instead of eliminating CASA. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. So just a quick, quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you wouldn't get the amount that was requested, what amount would be sufficient? The amount that we requested, which was the 30. Right. Uh, years past, uh, again, I've been with the agency many years, but only six as the executive director. We apply for 30 and we usually receive less. Last, the current year that we're in, we received 23,972. Uh, previous to that, I believe it was 15,000. So although we know we're gonna apply for X amount, we're realistic. We know we potentially will not get the full amount. Okay. Yes, Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, guys. I'm back again. Um, and a and reason I came back up here is because I want to just. One more time. I'm sorry? Your name one more time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Linda Ramos, um, 1022 North B Street, uh, Neighborhood Watch, uh, Community Liaison. Um, the reason I got back up is just to make an understanding to all the commissioners is that we've never gotten funding for Vista Park. I've been fighting for it since 2017. We have been forgotten. And, and, I, and I urge you and I, and, I, and I beg you from our children and my city and my neighborhood that don't have any means of what to travel to other organizations that are wonderful, by the way. Um, this is why, and it's not just so much the lighting. I see a lot of, you might look at lighting, but it's phases. Okay, like I said, basketball court, we already have the football league there. It has made an impact in these children. I wanna emphasize that that's what we're asking for help. We've never got the funds from HUD funding for a very, very long time. We've always been on the back burner and we've been had say no, 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 no. So I, I, I'm begging you from district two, from my neighborhood, for my children, help me save the children. Enough is enough, please help us fund. I don't know where to get the funding from. This is why I'm here. We're all here. We're all here, right here, Neighborhood Watch. We're care for the kids. There's so much crime and drug going on. If we don't do nothing right now, we don't make a stand. I, I don't know where else to ask for the funding because uh, this is supposed to be HUD funding. We have all never, um, 2017, I went and asked Javier to help me for basketball court because everything's locked up and, and I had 10 girls that they, everybody left me because some of these kids don't have nobody else. We're their voice, we're the ones that give them hope and encouragement. Let me do that. 
give me the means of how to do it. You know, let, them, let us give them hope. And, and I don't know how else to get the funds. I, I don't know about fire hydrants is more important than children, but to be children are more, more important uh, than, I, I'm not sure what's going on, but I ask you and I beg you do not take away from Vista Park. We have been waiting too long, too long, please. I, I beg you, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Linda. I think everybody here on the commission um, shares your concerns and are, are very excited about this um, this help for, for District 2. And I know Commissioner Lopez has been advocating for you. And, and I think we don't have any issue in, any issues, I think, in, in that um, regard. Sir? If you just state your name for the record. Good evening. My name is Art Villarreal. I'm a board member of CASA. And I have been involved with that organization since 2005, I believe. And in uh, an effort to be completely transparent, I am a crier. Be prepared. OK. Um, I want to start out by saying that the invocation this morning made me think of one verse in particular, which is found in Matthew 19:14 which says, suffer the children to come to me. <clears throat> In our contemporary English, suffer the children doesn't have the same meaning it had when it was first written. And an analysis of that is, when, when Jesus said, suffer the children and forbid them not to come to me, he was reaching out to a segment of the community that was thought to be insignificant by the adults. Children in their weakness and vulnerability have much to teach us as adults. And I think we need to keep that in mind. We've heard countless people this evening talk about children. Children frequently are used as <coughs> pawns, as, as, as a way to make a point that doesn't really care about the children, but rather cares about the result. I promise you that's not our intent tonight. I wanted to point out a couple of things. I heard someone mention earlier, the phrase was, and I wrote it down, your priority of strong economic development. I don't envy you. You have uh, a difficult job to do, and I really appreciate the fact that every one of you is looking at me with both of your eyes. I, I've, I've seen you looking at your tablets, working, you know, I, I appreciate this, because I want you to understand how I feel about these children. The process that these children, and I'm talking specifically the children which CASA advocates for, is a difficult one. Imagine you are a child, not unlike the young lady that was here that was honored by this organization tonight. Strangers come to your house, take you from your parents because of nothing you've done. They place you, hopefully, with a relative, but many times not. They place you with strangers. And in that home, frequently, there are other children who have been placed with those strangers. This goes on for up to a year, normally. From personal experience, I can tell you that I advocated for a pair of siblings, and my tenure with them was seven years. I'm sorry, do I have a time limit? Do I need to stop? Something. Just, uh, we'll give you a little more. Go okay, ahead. I'm a lawyer. I talk forever. I apologize. Well, then Let we're me... not going to give you any more. <laughs> <Let me. laughs> I'm, I'm joking. All right. <laughs> I, we're, you got lawyers up here too. It's all in fun. But <laughs> I couldn't tell. Um, so the the process is designed to last a year, but many times it goes longer. I had a case that lasted me seven years. I advocated for a pair of boys from this community that were suffering in an abusive home, a drug addicted mother and her partner who, although we never could substantiate it, apparently molested one of the children. They were taken from that home. My first case, and this is the one that makes me cry, an infant child who had teenage parents that were drug addicted and alcohol addicted and decided they didn't want to be parents and therefore tried to kill the child nine times. The child was found to have broken bones in various stage of healing when he was finally taken to the hospital 
because the six day old raw ground beef they fed him to try to kill him didn't do the job. Those are the kids that Casa helps. <clears throat> and the idea, no offense to anyone, that fire hydrants, park lights, restriping feather flags, somehow come first is offensive to me. I ask you to reconsider. Ooh, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Thank you, Dora. I ask you to rec reconsider. Oh, and by the way, Ms. Martinez, the executive director, was my supervisor, the position that's being asked of you to fund. And many times when volunteers cannot make it, their supervisor stands in their stead, make, writing reports, filing those reports, standing in in court. So supervising is not simply pulling strings. It is actively being engaged in the advocacy for these children. And so that request is, is, is not outrageous. The need of these children, you can't put a dollar amount on. And again, I don't envy you. I understand you have difficult decisions to make. And you have to balance all these different needs. But think about that little boy. And think about the other two. That's a drop in the bucket of the good that CASA does in this community. That doesn't even touch the rest of the county, <coughs> the state, the country. The goal is to have one advocate for every sibling set. We're nowhere near that. But if we were to somehow be able to acquire more volunteers, they necessarily have to be supervised. <coughs> And you guys can help make that happen. Thank you so much. I apologize for going over. Thank you. So just want um, for the folks that are in the room, I and I appreciate. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? I'll 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 wait until we hear from Ms. Noemi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Noemi Cisneros. And first of all, I want to thank you all for an amazing job that you are doing throughout our city. I want to thank the CBDG, the C, I always get it wrong, the Community Development Block Grant Board for the recommendations for Vestal Park. Unlike any other park, Vestal Park is not just any park. And, you know, my heart goes out to CASA and their members because we know how traumatizing it can be for the kids. And Vestal Park, we're here because District 2, that's one of our highest crime you know, areas. It's, it's in the heart of our city. And it's always had different problems. They've gotten better. And you know, <coughs> I want to thank Javier with Parks and Recreation, working along with Daniel Lopez as our District 2 Commissioner. And of course, everybody that is coming together, I want to thank you for supporting Vestal Park Project. Because this, pro uh, this project, we need to make sure that we give them the tools and facilities. It's more than just lights. It's not about the lights. It's about giving these kids that go in the wrong direction. And Chief Kester, they know. I mean, what we live in that neighborhood, it's constant shots fired, kids and drugs, kids that have nobody to show them the love and support <clears throat> that they need. And if we can come together and curb, curb it even more, because I think we're doing an amazing job just working together with Daniel Lopez, Chief Kester, HPD, and our Parks and Recreation. That park is going to help so many kids get the help that they need to overcome the many challenges that COVID that, you know, has, they, they, they're going through you know, after COVID. So this is a way of us helping those kids and those families, because it's not just about the kids, it's about the families, to get to ever enter a home like Casa. And our heart <coughs> goes out to Casa, because we know the results of those families and what they can go through. And so we've lived it throughout the years, through family, through friends. We know the consequences and the direction that that can, the children can take. So you are our lifeline for our families and our taxpayers in Hardingen. Because if we can curb the crime in District 2, 
we're making it a safer Harlingen. So we must come together and work together to make it a better Harlingen for all of us. So thank you, Daniel. Thank you, all of you that care about our, our taxpayers, our children, our families. So this is why I wanted to come here. I don't like to do a lot of public speaking, but I said, you know what? I do find it offensive because it's not about the lights. It's about the children, the families, not just about District 2, but the whole city. We love Harlingen, and this is why we're stepping it up to advocate. <clears throat> Neighborhood Watch, it's amazing because not only do we keep an eye on our families, our neighbors, but a lot of our community. So I ask you to please do not take away from Vestal Park because you are the lifeline of those children and those families. So thank you. I really appreciate everything that you all have done, and especially Javier. He does an amazing. He got us an emergency gate. Yeah. We look at every little detail about that park because we need an, <coughs> a, an ambulance. Uh, Abel Castaneda is doing an amazing job. He coaches. We have over almost over 200, 300 kids part of that league. And they're city children. You know, they're not kids that are coming from other cities. You know, all that tax fee money, of course, it stays here. So you know what, Gaza, you need volunteers. We have a room full of volunteers and we're here for you. And so I'm sorry, but sometimes this park is very important for the families in that district. So we're here for you all and our heart does go out to you. So thank you thank for you. your time and attention. Thank you. God bless you all. <laughs> do, we, do we have a um, quick clarification just for the record? That's what I was uh, going <laughs> to do. <laughs> Vestal Park and Casa are not competing against yeah. each other. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. no, no. But it was offensive because we, that's why I think. Yeah, yeah, it's more about like sometimes you don't know the story behind okay. the different reasons of why we <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. But yeah, is there bucks, buckets of money? Yeah. So we can't use Vestal Park money for Casa, and we can't use Casa money for Vestal Park. Completely different. But thank you guys. Yes. Is there anyone else wishing um, to speak in this public hearing? Okay. Wonderful. And so yes, thank you, Commissioner Lopez, for that. And and I just again and want to reiterate. <coughs> um, I know that this is a very difficult. Uh, agenda item, right? It's, it, there's a lot of emotions, um, and we want to help everyone, but we want to make sure that that folks know that are here in the room today and also watching from home and maybe watching at a later time also that um, this commission, and, and I hope I speak for everyone, is, is fully in support of, of Vestal Park and the improvements. We understand the need for it. Um, there, you know, our parks, we have a ton of green spaces. Um, our Parks and Rec Department are amazing, led, of course, by, by our Director Mendes. Um, and we want to be able to improve all parks throughout the community. And at this point, it's time for, for Vestal Park. And we're 100% we're um, OK with that and in support of that. And we want to help. Uh, we also want to help all these different agencies um, or nonprofits as well. Because you know, what we're, what we're missing here is that each one of these nonprofits, they're in it to help their population, their, the people that they serve. You know, you, you, it's hard taking away from one to give to another. There's um, Maggie's House that does a phenomenal job, um, at, you know, helping folk, you know, kids that are in situations where they've been abused. Um, the, you know, I don't know how they do the work that they do, but they're, you know, they're amazing. Casa, same thing. Family Crisis Center, same thing, you know. Um, loaves and fishes, it, it can happen to anyone, you know, be homeless and, and, and not have a warm meal or somewhere to sleep. So these, these are all agencies that are well and they're deserving. And I think that the commission is going to have a way to be able to, to help everyone. And we're working on that because that's what we're here to do. We're here to serve the community in the best way that we can. We have limited funding. I know Sandy would wish we'd have more money. We all wish we would. Um, but we're going to do what we can to make sure that everybody gets um, some some funding and and hopefully the people that are very um, passionate about these different services I would encourage you to you know you need to lobby your state representatives your federal um, you know your congressman and 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 tell them that there needs to be more funding in these different types of um, allocations that are given to entitlement communities like ours just like Commissioner <coughs> said you know you can expect these funding this funding to 
decrease, right, each, each year. And so we're back here again and, and struggling with the same amount, if not less, um, next year. So it's an ongoing issue. But thank you all for, for coming out and to speak in this, in this public hearing. It was very valuable. We appreciate your input. Um, and we are considering every, every person's um, comments and those that were unable to be here, and we read those comments as well. So at this point, we will close the public hearing. And I know that there was a, um, a motion being considered. Um, Michelle, you want to? Yeah, so what I would like to do is remove 30000 from the Boys and Girls Club with the intention that we will refund that 30000 later on in the budget cycle. I move that 30000 to CASA and then leave the rest uh, of the monies alone. I make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay. So, um, and just for the record, I just want uh, to make the record clear that uh, Commissioner Kinsley did abstain from that vote. So, if the minutes are being taken. Yes. Uh, I would just like to add that when Fernando watches this video, what <laughs> Sandy said about his paper, she didn't mean, so don't hold it against us. I, I agree. Um, Fernando, putting that out uh, there for you, Sandy. Yeah, Fernando, uh, address all questions <laughs> to the mayor. <laughs> I read the paper. Um, okay, now yeah. moving on to the very anticipated item. Number seven, presentation by Gabriel Trevino, um, engineer, and Joseph Lund uh, with Harlingen Waterworks Systems regarding a proposed project to include the installation of nine fire hydrants and approximately 440 linear feet, eight inch water line to provide fire coverage to currently unprotected homes within the target area specified in attachment number two funded through fiscal year 2023 to 2024 um, by the CDBG proposed um, budget. And okay. this item was um, put on by Commissioners Morales and Lopes. Okay, but before you start, I guess, Sandy, you're still here. Um, what, what color bucket is this in? It's not. It's not. Oh, it's not. That's why I mentioned. But uh, it, it's, it's OK. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Let's, I think your answer will be, will okay. be, uh, okay. yeah, let's get the, the presentation um, right. on, and I, but it's not, not any of these uh, deals. Go right ahead. Good, good evening, Madam Mayor, gentlemen of the City Commission. I guess for Commissioner Mesmar's clarification, let me, before starting the presentation, let me start with a little bit of background on. Yeah, get, give me <coughs> a second, please. Go right ahead. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, let me, before starting the presentation, let me provide a little bit of black, uh, background for clarification for the commission on how we got to this point today. Um, <coughs> as Ms. Alvarez had mentioned earlier, the notice of funding uh, availability was released, uh, was released back in, I believe she said, March or April. And on the document, it does list the uh, eligible uh, types of projects. It mentioned drainage, storm sewer, and such. <coughs> and uh, water and wastewater was not explicitly stated. And so we were under the impression that Harnage and Waterworks projects didn't qualify, uh, and on, that may have been a mistake on our part. It wasn't until quite a bit later, I believe, pa past the application deadline, possibly even past uh, the May 24th presentation deadline, that we were approach, uh, approached by Commissioner Morales, and he had mentioned, like, hey, our engine Waterworks hasn't submitted any projects, and we informed the commissioner we were not aware that we qualified. So we had set up a meeting with Ms. Alvarez to learn more <coughs> about the program, and Commissioner uh, Morales was there, you know, listening with us to be educated for you know, this fiscal year and for future future fiscal years. Um, it was clarified that water and wastewater projects uh, did qualify, and we were encouraged to submit a project. We understand that there is a process. We wanted to respect that. Uh, we did put together an application. We did have a project that fell within the uh, target area for the CDBG funding application. And so that's why we're here today. This is a project that came, that came in after the fact, and we, are, we thank you so much for the opportunity to present to you this project. Uh, 
So unless uh, if any of the commissioners would like to comment or anything, I can jump right into the presentation. Right ahead. Okay. <coughs> so in the target area, Harnjun Waterworks has approximately 43 existing fire hydrants. The fire hydrants are identified here in the center of these uh, light blue circles. These circles represent the uh, hydrant radii for each of the hydrants. Um, the city subdivision ordinance requires uh, no more than 600 feet spacing between hydrants for new development. This neighborhood is quite old, so the hydrants currently do not meet that ordinance requirement. So there are two primary issues, the coverage and the capacity. So as you can see, regarding coverage, there are several gaps in the existing fire hydrant grid. There are several hundred homes that are either underprotected or potentially unprotected entirely. There is also capacity requirements where the existing fire hydrants are unable to meet the 1,000 uh, gallon per minute requirement by the International Fire Code, as well as the pressure requirements for TCQ. <coughs> the reason being is that majority of the lines in this area are all small diameter lines, ranging from two inch in diameter to six inch diameter. Typically for a fire hydrant, at an absolute minimum, you would prefer six inch. The standard would be eight inch diameter piping. So Harnish and Waterworks had identified in its, in its recently approved master plan a project to hopefully mitigate these issues. The, over, the overlying project encompasses nearly 27,500 linear feet of new 8-inch water mains and about 38 additional fire hydrants. The total proposed project cost is near $7.4 million. So as, again, you know, we were approached to submit a project, and so we took the time to find a way to piecemeal a, a project, a phase of the project that would fit, because obviously 7.4 million will not be funded by 834,000. So we did identify what we're, what we're calling phase one for this, uh, the current CDBG fiscal year, and our intent is to try and continue to submit in subsequent years and to hopefully complete this project within, uh, over the next phase, in phases over the next 10 years. So, to, so just to clarify, what was uh, submitted for this year is what, what we are calling phase one is a proposal to install nine fire hydrants and extend approximately 440 linear feet of eight inch water main. What this will do is this will add fire coverage for up to about 200 homes. And so uh, we tried to, again, we tried to really piecemeal this to fit into a reasonable cost for phase one. Right now we're looking at approximate cost of 268,000. The proposed hydrants are identified here in the red circles, and I do apologize, we probably should have shown the existing fire hydrant grid overlaid with it. And as far as the water line extensions, there are only two, one there and one there, and the point of those extensions is to be able to put a hydrant in a place where it will actually maximize its coverage. Um, so I do apologize, that was a bit rushed, but uh, it's pretty hard to follow up with uh, the, all the emotions that just you know, okay, way out, uh, so this will just fund phase phase one for the current fund, year, correct. and so you need another nine years of extra money to do it all and do it well. Correct? Potentially, if we can if we can cut it into enough pieces. One of the challenges that I was facing when I was trying to identify which hydrants to do, which lines to extend, was okay. What are the run lengths of these lines? Um, and so. We, what, I, what I picked was, to, to put it bluntly, was the low-hanging fruit, <laughs> was which hydrants can we install that are on existing lines that will require <laughs> the minimum amount of upgrades to basically optimize the funds that we're requesting. Um, it's, it's possible in subsequent years there won't be as much meat on the bones to really get the hydrants, because again, as you saw before, <coughs> there were, uh, the entire project is 30 hydrants, but there's 27,000 linear feet vanish line. So there's quite a bit that we have to extend to be able to provide the um, correct amount of flow and pressure for those hydrants. And how old are those water lines? 60, 80? Most likely. Uh, um, I can tell you that most of the PVC lines have the, uh, have the capability of being at least 40 years old. Anything not PVC would potentially be much older. So, we, so PVC was, an, was a generally accepted pipe material in the 80s. So there you go. Anything, any AC water lines, which there are actually quite a few, I believe the majority of our six inch lines, which is the absolute minimum standard for a fire, for a fire hydrant, most of them are actually AC lines and they're prone to maintenance issues, pressure issues, 
because you don't want the pipe to explode. <coughs> and and so you're going from four inch to eight inch. And in some cases, even from two. So as I said, two inch. Of, there are two inch lines. Yes, this this area is, has a lot of two inch, four inch, and six inch lines. Um, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I believe eight, our eight inch lines are primarily just these main roads here, one there, and one there. So these red lines. So and I and I, again, I apologize, I didn't cover this quite appropriately. <coughs> these yellow dots that you see here are the 38 proposed fire hydrants, and all of these red lines are the proposed eight inch PVC water lines that would be needed to provide the proper fire flow and pressure for this area. Now, just to, as a quick side note, this is a project that, you know, has been on the books for years. It's been requested by previous commissioners, brought to the attention of previous general managers. And as you all know, last year we, we presented our master plan to you all. The need is there. And so what we're doing is we're trying to find, just as you find both here, every opportunity to fund the needed projects. You know, again, we just recently became acquainted with the uh, CDBG fund. In fact, we are actually working with the city on a CDBG project right now, the Los Vecino Street project, which I believe some of you are familiar with. So right now at this point in time, just as, like I said, just as these fine folks were trying to explore every avenue possible to start chipping at that number that we showed you all last year. And you're going to add new fire hydrants. You're not replacing any these existing. Are, these, are com these are entirely new fire hydrants providing fire coverage in areas where there, weren't, where there wasn't any. So again, th so again, if I go back to the existing map, and I apologize, I should have really put an overlay of the existing versus the proposed, but those nine hydrants are in locations where you can see gaps in the existing fire hydrant grid. And when did you identify, uh, how long have you been, you said previous commissions and general managers, so, so this request has been go ongoing for the how need, long? The need for it has been, but as far as actually putting pen to paper and identifying, okay, where exactly do these 38 hydrants need to be, where exactly do these 8-inch water lines need to be, that portion is a little bit more recent that was uh, undertaken during our master plan efforts. So again, it's, so if you have a previous commissioner that says, hey, I need you know, I have a need for additional fire hydrants in this area, and we're just looking at the grid. It's not, it's not as easy to identify where they're needed just based off of coverage because there's water modeling involved. And as part of our master plan, we did have, our consultant did provide uh, water modeling and identified, hey, you have fire flow issues in this area. And then again, put, pairing that with, against the city ordinance, it's like, okay, well, not only do we have flow issues, we have coverage issues. The grid is not complete. There are several gaps. There are several homes that are left unprotected. Mm -hmm. So it's been a process over a number of years. <coughs> it just seems like a safety issue in that it would have yeah. been prioritized at a, at a prior time, not, um, you know, and, and I'm, not, I'm not addressing this to you. I, you're doing a phenomenal job. But um, given that it seems to be a safety issue, that it would have been, a, been prioritized and funded Previously, because this doesn't seem this seems more of a necessity, not a not a not a want or an improvement. It's it's inadequate. So, so right. to clarify on two points on the master right. plan, this is within the five year plan. But another, but uh, so so again to clarify, this is on the five year plan. But another thing is that fire hydrants are the, are for the benefit of the city fire department. Sure. So so, so you're it, asking for two sixty eight to to start this for year one. Correct. What's year two through ten cost under current numbers? It, would be, it would be a continuous it effort said, to try and piecemeal this. In the I most mean, are we talking millions? It said seven point. The total the total project as escalated to today's dollars is seven point four now, as as we've all seen. And so, with inflation like down the road, you're talking ten million or more potentially. So, uh, just so that I understand, this seven million, Tim. Um, there are other areas in our community that that look like like this, where there. <clears throat> this has this has been a hot spot, and so there have been requests on this area that have been um, more <coughs> frequent than other areas. We actually have a heat map that shows where there are some low pressure areas or fire flow avail availability isn't quite as good. But we specifically, when we advertised the qualifications uh, for this project, we wanted this project to be included. Uh, and I, there are documents that are written on a paper map from the early 2000s that identify a plan for doing fire hydrants. I think we've taken a more sophisticated approach through the master plan. 
another factor that comes in uh, with fire hydrants is Waterworks has had a longstanding policy that we don't add fire <coughs> hydrants to areas of the system. Typically, what when a development comes in, the fire department states their requirements for fire hydrants. So it's not been Waterworks policy to go and add fire hydrants. Fire hydrants are attached to our system, but the fire department is the one who needs them. They're the ones who operate fire hydrants. And so this has, for several reasons, has sat on the desk for a while. One is because of that policy. Some of it's because of uh, the lack of funding. Uh, but there had been so many requests, the previous commissioner and I'm sure commissioners before that had been looking at this project. And we thought the master plan was a good opportunity to uh, put it on the plan. Uh, we think CDBG is a great opportunity to fund this kind of a project because it's not a traditional type of project that Waterworks funds. And the other reason why this is a good fit for CDBG is that we can carve this out into smaller pieces. If you've got a big, long sewer pipeline, you can't just build 10 feet of it uh, this is uh, one that we can attack in, piece, in pieces, so we think it's a, a good opportunity um, as, as funds are available. Okay, so since, so oh, sorry, go ahead. since you're not in any of these buckets, where's this money coming from? That we can get from Sandy, right? I think, is that right? Yeah. I don't think Tim wants to speak to, speak to that or, yeah, yeah. or the, in, the it, engineers. You know, just, just so uh, Fernando knows and the people know, where's the money coming from? <laughs> Sandy, yeah. if, if you want to come and um, chime in. Do we have it? I'm sorry, have Commissioner, you have Tim. a question. So I just want to verify for future allotments. So um, now that the Waterworks does qualify for some of the projects under the CDBG, and I know you just mentioned sewer. And you know how much I love sewer because we've talked about my district needing <clears> sewer <throat> lines. Not that, you know what I mean. But um, so would that be uh, something that this would, the sewer lines and getting sewers <coughs> to the west side, would that be something that would be able to get funding from this or not? The theoretically, yes. Uh, some of the challenge when we look at our master plan projects, they're multi-million dollar projects and they're harder to break up into pieces. When you look at fire hydrants, you've got a, a fixed location here. It's an easier process to tackle this. If we were to take a, say, a $5 million sewer project, it becomes much more cost ineffective to do that in a, in a stepwise or multi-phase process. And so <clears throat> the technical answer is yes, but I don't think that's really a cost effective way to fund and approach those kinds of projects. Um, you would have to be in a low to moderate income area, Commissioner. I'm sorry? You'd have to be in a low to moderate income area to receive uh, block grant funding? And that's a great point. This area is part of a focus area, and there's not many many areas in town where our master plan falls within that. So there's a lot of things coming together that this is really a great fit for CDBG. Probably the best of the projects that we have uh, in, in terms of that. So. so the reason that I asked earlier is because now, um, obviously, this becomes a new um, uh, potential way for you to fund some of these smaller smaller projects in these areas that need it the most, right? The, the lower income areas. So that 7.3 million um, come next year, would will you be able to present an area? That, because this looks to me like, I mean, it, it, it's concerning, right? That they don't have the, the say something happened. I mean, I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole right now. But if there's others in, pre in preparing for the following years, if, if that's a possibility, if um, we have other areas in town that are, that are considered low income, um, older, which I'm assuming kind of same same layout here, that you can go back to the drawing board because if this has been on the books for a long time and kind of been on the on the back burner, maybe this is something that we can do in different areas of our community in these small pieces. You know, if we chop at it every year, then you, you eventually get to 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 um, covering the areas that at least. Um, the uh, you know Miss Sandy here can can help with not all obviously not all areas of our community <coughs> definitely not all areas of of district of district five um, but maybe a little bit in each of these districts um, from our, from the commission and I would point out and we, we've not been using CBDG money but uh, we're currently in the middle um, in year at the end of year one of a sewer renewal project where we've identified 16 or 17 different project sites. And those are scattered through the older parts of town. And, mm -hmm. and there's no doubt that some of those could have been CDBG funded. But 
We have identified that project as an ARPA-funded project, and so we're currently under contract for that. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have been an opportunity for CDBG. Um, there may be some other areas where fire hydrant projects could be considered, but this has been one of the hotter focused, uh, the, the more highly, more frequently uh, requested projects. So sure. uh, there's no doubt about that, and we certainly can, can review that when we uh, undertake our annual CIP review. Sounds good. Any other questions for these gentlemen? No. Okay, Sandy, you want to tell us how we're going to be able to fund this? Okay, so this would not come from 2023-2024 funding, um, but if the commission wanted to consider CDBG funding, we do have a project that hasn't materialized from 2021-2022, and I think that's what uh, Commissioner Morales was indicating so that would have to come back we have to go through public hearings um, go back to the board to consider this project but um, that would come later so, so it's, it's through you, a substantial amendment can you elaborate a little on the project why it hasn't materialized how much funds are there there um, so that for the benefit, because this is not an action item from what I understand, this is just a presentation, but so that way the commission understands that it can be, because it can be, right? So, so, it, it's an so eligible this, project. So this comes from old, unused money. Right. And we have to use it. Right. Use it. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like that. <laughs> Is there, I mean, I, I understand, but I don't know if anybody else needs a further clarification. We're good? Okay. So then I think that, um, I don't know if there's maybe some instruction uh, to, to the, um, so she takes back to her board or how? how what, she what would have to go back to her board for a substantial, what project is it coming from? Uh, Victor, Victor Park Pool Improvements. Victor Park. It's uh, 215700 that we have. Um, so obviously it's not enough, very close. The rest would probably come from the housing rehab reconstruction from 23-24. So it would be two substantial amendments. It would be the one for 215 from 2021-2022. And uh, the reason that one has, has not materialized is because we went out for bids for that project and the, uh, the bids came in double pretty much of what we have. So we haven't been able to move forward with it. And, it so. and I've yet to hear back there. This isn't going to affect the basketball court, right? There at Bestel Park. <laughs> that okay. funding has been allocated, right? Yes. Yes. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, thank you all for this uh Great presentation. We appreciate your hard work and, and, and presenting this to us. I'm sure that Sandy will go back to her board and um, and, and, and discuss what they need to do to, to make it happen. What would be the time frame for that? Like for us to get some information back on when we can start making those amendments? There's a 30-day comment period. Okay. We have to go through, we have to publish, first of all, and uh, go to the board for their uh, approval of the project. Of course, they would present the project. Um, so we're looking at total, by the time I bring it, we have to do a public hearing also with commission and then come back for approval. It's like August? So we are June, yeah, August, maybe September. September? Yes. <coughs> and then, of course, we have to submit um, the substantial amendment to HUD. They approve it allocate the funding, get with finance. It, it's a process. So that's after us, right? Yes. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Environmentals. Well, well, we're here to help you. So just go back to the board, see what you got to do, make do your magic, and then come back. And we're here to support you. OK. Thank you. And of course, we want to help Tim. We want to we help these people that are in this community. That's my concern. So whatever you need from, from me, whatever you need from us, just, just let us know. I know you got a lot on your plate, but Thank you for, for bringing this to our attention. Um, the sooner the better that we can get on this. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much for your help. Yes, ma'am, and I'd like to just thank uh, Commissioner Morales and <coughs> Commissioner Lopez for bringing this agenda item up. Mm -hmm. It's uh, crazy you. how we ended up with this. Yeah. <laughs>
It's Thank tough you. to swallow. All right. And <clears throat> we already handled eight. Um, okay, item nine, <laughs> consideration, <laughs> consideration and possible action to approve the Harlingen Economic Development Corporation Amendment for fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Beverly, you've been so patient back there. Hi, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners and staff. Um, most of y'all, you should have received the budget in your packet, so I will keep it short, um, as short as I can make it, and then I'll open it up for questions and um, ask I wonder for your... if this uh, commission is ready to approve or you have questions sure. for Beverly. Make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Well, you made my job easy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in there. Thank you. You're, you're, you're so persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, item 10, uh, board appointments. We'll start with Commissioner Kinsley. Uh, yes, ma'am. I have three reappointments to the Senior Citizens Advisory Board, Jack Brogdon, <coughs> to the Downtown Improvement Board, Joe Wagner, and to the Convention and Visitors Bureau, Kristen Lucky, and for the Airport Board to replace Mr. Ricky Leal with Dr. Alicia Noyola. No. And then for me? Yeah, uh, I'd like to reappoint Eric Zihi to the De Development Corporation of Harlingen. I'd like to reappoint Minerva Simpson as Zoning Board of Adjustments. Reappoint Michelle Franco Mar as the alternate at the Zoning Board of Adjustments. And I'd like to appoint a Navy guy, <laughs> Mark Calazales to the Veterans Advisory Board. I would like to reappoint Jesus Pena to the Downtown Improvement Board and also Raymond Reyes to the Downtown Improvement Board. Awesome. OK, do we have a motion to approve these appointments? Motion. Sec uh, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, <coughs> item 11. Executive session on the following items. Uh, A, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.072 regarding the purchase, lease, or value of real estate if the deliberating in an open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the position of the City of Harlingen in negotiations with a third person regarding some of the following projects in Texas Government Code Section 551.087 regarding commercial and financial information <coughs> from business prospects with which the city is conducting economic development negotiations and or to discuss or deliberate financial or other incentives relating to the following um, EDC projects. One, Project Organic. Two, Project Plumber. Three, Project Roosevelt. And item B, consultation with legal counsel pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.0712 regarding proposed collective bargaining labor <coughs> agreement, Harlingen Police Officer and Law Enforcement Association. Do we have a motion to go into executive? So motion. motion. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is now 747, and we will be in executive session. Thank you. Time is now 9.15, and we are out of executive session and back on uh, regular session. Let's see here. We've got item 12, consideration and possible action on item 12A, 1 through 3, um, as discussed in executive session. Do we have a motion? Motion. For Second. Motion for? Somebody want to? Okay, and so the motion is for to take action as discussed, as discussed in, in the executive, executive session. session. Okay, um, and then there was a, sink, a second for Morales. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and we don't have any action on item 13. So that is all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We are adjourned.